it would be, sorry for the interruption, it would be the displacement equation. Because remember, displacement is what we are looking for. And the displacement equation is x equals our initial displacement, which is probably going to be zero, right? Initial displacement plus v naught times t. What's our initial velocity? Zero, because remember we're coming down, plus one half a t squared. So yes, we can absolutely use the shortcut of this equation, which is x equals one half a t squared, because we have all of the that nice zero stuff. If you are not at the point where you can just jump to the shortcut, then by all means, please write it all out. Uh, this that's the safe way. It does take a little bit longer. We, I do want you to work get to the point where you're working through these problems rather quickly. But um, you know, I also want you to do it um, with precision. Know what you're doing. So we have x equals one half at squared. We we can just substitute in here. We have zero point four squared, uh, and then we have half of a. So half of ten is five, and that'll give be our displacement. So we get our displacement to be zero point eight meters. There you go. Uh, that was our substitute, sorry, and then the solve. How fast must a ball be thrown to strike a ceiling five meters higher than the ball's release height? So we are throwing a ball at the ceiling that is about 15 feet above our head. So how fast do we have to throw it? If the ball reaches the ceiling, the ball's final speed will be zero. We'll switch the sp final speed of zero with the unknown initial speed, and then we're going to go through the shortcut. So we have the position, uh, excuse me, x equals 5 meters, acceleration equals 10 meters per second, because the object's in free fall, it's the only, gravity is the only force acting on this thing. The unknown variable will be the initial velocity, or in this case the final velocity, because we're going to say the initial velocity is zero, so we can use the shortcut shortcut equation. It's not that short, right? Um, so we have final velocity squared equals 2ax. The, the good thing about using this is it's already solved for the variable, so we don't have to do any, any extra algebra steps. I know we hate those, um, and they are Sources of error, for sure. So, on to the substitute. 10 times 5 times 2. Velocity is 10. How do we get velocity is 10? 2 times 10 is 20. Times 5 is only 100. Don't forget to take that square root. You will forget, unless you actively remember. And every time you write this equation, you write the square. So on the next step down, write the square. Hopefully you're writing this and following along because we are moving on to more complicated examples. Get out of the way. An object travels along a straight line path, so its position is given as a function of time by the graph below. What is the average acceleration of the object during the inter interval between 4 and 6 seconds? the dots, looking for the average acceleration. So we're going to have to use the graph to get our given information. Remember, as soon as you're presented with a graph, the first thing you're going to look at is the axis. In this case, it's a position and time graph. So the slope of a position versus time is velocity. Initial velocity is negative 5 meters per second. The final velocity is 15 meters per second. How can we figure that out? Well, take a look. Even though there's this curve here in between these two dots, it is a straight line leading in and it is a straight line leading out. 
So we're just going to take the slope of this straight line, and that gives us negative 5 meters per second. 30 minus 10 is 20, right? That's our rise, negative 20. And then the run is from 0 to 4. And then over here we have the rise going from 20 to 80, so 60, and then divided by Or again. Okay. Uh, the total time that this uh, curvedness here is happening is only two seconds. So that is also information that we have taken from this graph. The question specifically asks us the average acceleration during this interval between four and six seconds. So we're looking for acceleration. We know acceleration is just our change in velocity over change in time. Substituting in, minus a negative is plus a positive, divided by 2. So, so we get A equals 10 meters per second squared. Object traveling along a straight line path, so its position is given as a function of time by the graph below. Checking again its position and time. I keep reading as graph below, but that word is definitely not in there. What is the magnitude of the object's constant acceleration during the interval of time on the graph? So we're looking for the interval of time that's shown in the graph because we're given a position time graph and there's never a time when the graph is a line so we can take a slope. Instead we're going to use the equation x equals one half at squared plus v naught t plus x naught. But we do get to choose points on the graph to use, so we can choose the points that make the initial velocity zero, so that will make the problem quite a bit easier because we can remove this term entirely. So here we go. The red point is where the object has zero velocity, right, because the slope is zero at this point. So we'll call this the initial time and the initial position. This makes our initial position 2 meters. The green point is later on the graph where we can clearly see the object's final position is 6 meters. It intersects this point right here at 6 meters and it's at 7 seconds so we know our time interval is 2 seconds. So our given information, remember the initial velocity is 0 our initial position is 2 meters, not 2 seconds, typo. The final position is 6 meters, and the time is 2 seconds. We're looking for acceleration, again using this equation, plugging in, and we are solving for A. Please don't just watch this, please. Try this. This is a difficult problem. Not impossible, but uh, absolutely something that is expected for you to know. Uh, my test, AP test, whatever you're taking. Scientists studying the stopping distance x of a car that caused the brake to slow to rest, the 